Okay, hi, my name is Casey. This is I don't know what I'm doing because I don't know what I'm doing. But today I'm going to talk to you about the most disappointing reads of 2022. These are by no means bad books. A lot of these actually got rather like, you know, medium to high ratings for me. But they were just books that I either had high hopes for and they just didn't live up to it or they just something or another let me down, which sounds really self-centered, but that's just where we're at. This does not have a tier ranking to it. These are just books I found disappointing, and so we're going to talk about them in whatever order I wrote them down here on my phone. I think this should be the only list that has a that has two or any repeats from um, a different list that I did. This has two of the uh, ones from my uh, worst books because I not only found them to be the worst books, but they were also some of the most disappointing. There you go. That seems self-explanatory. I don't know why I explained it. Okay, the first one I have here is Ring by Koji Suzuki. This was really disappointing to me because the Ring American movie was very influential for me as a young person and as a young person figuring out that I loved horror and it was going to be a big part of my life for the rest of my life. And I had a lot of hopes for this. I'm having such trouble holding it. I had a lot of hopes for this because I've wanted to read it for a really long time. And this was one of the worst books I actually read this year. Um, I still plan on continuing in the series, mostly because I have the most recent published book in the series and it has a really lovely cover. And but I just, I, I, I kind of hated this. I found it very disappointing. I thought it was really offensive at times. And I, I don't know why we were writing certain things like this, even in like 2001 or 1999, whenever it was published. The next book on this list is Just Like Mother by Anne Heltzel. The primary reason this was disappointing to me is this just had such a cool cover. And I was so excited to, uh, to read it without really knowing much about it. And once I read the premise of it, I was also, you know, pretty intrigued because I haven't read a lot of uh, culty books and I think that there's a lot of potential there. And this unfortunately makes me think that culty books just really might not be for me. It was over the top and it was just, it was just too much, man. It was too much, too much all at once in a, in a big old pot of just not really working. <laughs> The next book on this list is a novella from Four Past Midnight from Stephen King, and that is The Library Policeman. It's not a novella. I think it's actually, like, it could be its own full-length novel. Um, so calling it a novella might be uh, misleading. But um, out of all four of the novels in here, this was the only one star. Um, what's the last one in here? Yeah, this is, it's the only one that got under three stars for me. And it was a one star. It was, no, not it, Chief. It was bad. I hated it. I felt like it was just kind of two stories that were kind of thrown together with no attempt at cohesion. And that's on top of, you know, I don't really know that there needed to be that really graphic abuse scene in here at all. I thought it was really heinous and I I think it should have been a cut to black moment and it was truly one of the worst things that I read this year for all of those reasons. Next book on this list is House of Hunger by Alexis Henderson. Uh, overall this book was fine. Um, I think it's just not for me in particular but I really loved The Year of the Witching. I was quite surprised by how much I really enjoyed it and connected with it and found it to be really one of the most engaging like uh like new adult fantasies that I read in a long time and I I kind of had high hopes for House of Hunger and I and it just didn't work it just didn't work for me I really commend the author on the ability for fiction that I think reads a little bit younger not young adult but it does feel a little bit like new adult and her ability to just go there that was consistent between the year of the witching and House of Hunger and I really, I appreciate that. I appreciate just being like, just going full force and being like, no, this is a sapphic story and we're going to talk about it in those terms. And there's not going to be a lot of wishy-washiness with that, or there's going to be blood and there's going to be gore and there's going to be some violence. But I just found the characters to be really disappointing. I really went more from Marion. I thought that the first third of this book set her up to be really 
not necessarily, I don't want to say sassy. Sassy feels like it has certain implications, but she was very no-nonsense for a character who was growing up in poverty and growing up with a bunch of classism and racism affecting her. And I think that unfortunately throughout the rest of the story, she just didn't have that same kind of attitude towards her situation. And I found that to be very disappointing. And overall, I just, I, I just kind of wanted more out of this. I wanted more out of Marion. I wanted more out of the setting. And I think that there, it just, it had such good plot for a while and then it would just kind of lose it to a bunch of exposition. Then we kind of ramp back up and then it just go back down to exposition. And it just, it just didn't pan out for me. And, and I'm very sad about it. Okay, the next two books on this list are kind of a package deal. Um, and it is, one second, the last two books in the Shades of Magic series. I am just going to hold up one, one or both of these like this. Um, these were both really disappointing to me. I was... I really enjoyed A Darker Shade of Magic. I think it really could have been a standalone. I don't think it needed the sequels. And I was very disappointed by the sequels. I thought that book two, A Gathering of Shadows, was really disappointing because I really liked Lyra and, uh, or Lila, not Lyra, Lila and Gal's friendship in book one. And for it to turn to romance, I was very put off by that. I did not like them as romantic interests. And I wanted them to just continue to be friends. And I didn't, I just hated that. I hated that. And I, I know I should have expected it to be piratey, but I think I'm finding out that like pirate stuff is just not for me, at least not in book form. And there was just, there was almost too much of piratey stuff in here. And I just overall really didn't connect with Lyra or Kel or, it's almost too exposition-y too. There's too much, not exposition-y, there's too much world building, which I know for a lot of people is their favorite thing in books. And I find it very tedious to read through. I would rather have plot and character. And there's just so much world building in this. And I, I found it very disappointing. I didn't enjoy it like hardly at all. I think I kind of gave it like a begrudging three stars, but it's, it's just meh. And then book three comes along and initially I gave this four stars on Goodreads because I did find myself very invested in the characters and what was going on. Um, but after talking about it with my husband, I knocked it down to three stars. It's kind of like a 3.5 technically, I guess, if that helps you kind of, you know, visualize where this is an enjoyment for me. While I loved the characters and I was very invested in what was happening with them, I think that there's just ultimately a lot in here that just, just was kind of mishandled for me, for my own personal taste. I wanted more from Holland, honestly. I wanted more of his story and I know we got a lot of it, but I wanted, I wanted more from him as a character. He was my favorite character in the first one. And I just, I wanted more. I wanted more from him. I, I think he's the best part of this. And I think it's the most interesting times in here is when we get to see him and his motivations and we finally get to have him as more of a person. But it just, I wanted more. I think that this should have had more of him. Um, and I think it should have had less of Lila and Kel chasing after each other and like doing this kind of like, will they, won't they? And am I mad at you? Are you mad at me? Are we actually going to be together? It just, it was just too much of that. And there's this whole section like in the middle here that just completely goes away from all the action that's happening. And it makes a vague attempt at answering like a question from the first book, but then it just, it just kind of ends up in this, <laughs> in this non-answer of, of, you know, discarding that information without revealing it. It's so hard to talk about. And I I think it's fine. It's a fine character decision, but it played so heavily into the, into this was something that specifically Kel wanted to know and then just threw it away. And I don't think that there was enough buildup in the other books for that to be a satisfying payoff. I also found the end of this to just be a little lackluster. There are certain characters in here that I think do get a full arc from the end of this, but unfortunately for me, most of them didn't. And I just found this to be very disappointing. And for the first book to be so strong and the last two books to both be very disappointing. 
Oh, it was sad. It was sad times. Okay, the next book on this list is my other crossover book from the worst books of the year, and that's Final Girl Support Group by Grady Hendrix. The main reason this is disappointing is because I've really enjoyed everything I've read from him so far. I really enjoy, I really loved My Best Friend's Exorcism. I thought that the Final Girls, not the Final Girls Support Group, uh, the Southern Book Club's Guide to Slaying Vampires, while like having its faults, I thought it was just such a fun ride the whole time and really infuriating and really had me invested in the main character storyline. And this one, I just, I just didn't care. We got to a certain point in the book that was pretty early and I just, I just kind of stopped caring. I thought it was too tropey and it, there wasn't enough of the characters and that's what I loved in his other two books that I've read. And then, you know, you add on to that just an over the top plot that's just, just kind of go, 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 go with no consideration for the, um, I, not, I don't even want to say realism, but just any semblance of uh, having a toehold in in reality, it was just, it was too much. And I just found it very disappointing. Next one on this list is The Shining Girls by Lauren Bukas. This was disappointing to me because I genuinely keep forgetting that I read this. <laughs> this was such a nothing book. I really do keep forgetting that I, I listened to the audiobook of this and I really enjoyed Invisible Monsters by this author and I'm definitely going to read more of her work, but I just for this being her most popular and most beloved, I found it to be pretty insubstantial. Like there was nothing wrong with it. I just, I, there was just nothing. I, I got like 18 hours past the end of the book and I just, I, I was like, why is this book in my pile of books I've read this month? It's, and I never have that happen to me. And so they're just, it just, it felt so inconsequential for my year. And I'm very disappointed about that. Next book on this list is All Systems Read by Martha Wells. Um, I know that this is a really well-loved book, and this is something that I think Book Talk and Booktube really love, and I didn't like. I didn't like. I, I, <laughs> I don't know how to talk about this um, without sounding mean, but I am kind of discovering uh, right, I guess not right now, but the last couple of years, I've really discovered that anything that is sort of touted as a really funny book and has really funny writing is, is probably not going to work for me. And I mean this kind of specifically because on my shelves, I have a whole bunch of Christopher Moore who's hilarious, but he sorts of write, he writes funny fiction and it's fiction that's like almost absurdist and the situations are funny, but there are some jokes in there that are very hilarious as well. But anything that's kind of touted as like funny horror or funny science fiction, that just genuinely doesn't work for me. I think it just cuts all the tension out of the situations and everything. And that was what this was. I would be like kind of getting into what was going on and then there would just be this joke that just felt a little tired. And I, I really didn't like this. It's... <laughs> There was a portion throughout the middle where it finally engaged me and I was ready to go and it just kept running into this issue of like it would it would try to throw in a joke there and I just found it very frustrating to read and I I really thought I was gonna like this and I really wanted to like this but I really didn't and it's disappointing. The last book on this list. This is truly the most disappointing book of 2022 for me and it's The Wild Ones by Nafisa Azad. This is disappointing because I thought I was going to love this. I thought this was going to be an, an all-time favorite. It has one of the most gorgeous covers that I read this year. And I just, I thought it was going to be everything to me. And it just ended up being so middle of the road for me. While still recognizing that it's incredible for other people. But the writing didn't quite work for me. And there wasn't enough character development and engagement for me to really love it and I really wanted to and I still enjoyed it I think it's incredible and I think it's incredible for a lot of other people but I wanted it to be a new favorite and it wasn't and it broke my heart I looked everywhere for this book by the way I was so committed to it was going to be a new favorite that I wanted to buy a physical copy of it and I couldn't find it anywhere in town so I grabbed a library copy and I, as much as like that would be beautiful on my shelves, I am glad that I don't have to eventually 
uh, donate this one to the library that they can have their own copies already because I would just be sad when I eventually had to do that because it's not a favorite. Okay, so those are my 10 most disappointing reads of 2022. Um, and I think that a lot of January is just going to be catching up on this kind of content, by the way, which uh, I know that everyone else has already posted all their stuff, but uh, I'm a little late on everything. So you're just going to have to tolerate it, I guess, or like not watch it. You don't have to tolerate anything. You can just not fucking watch this. I'm ranting. Okay, bye. Have a great day.